Good, good, good. <laughs> uh, talking about local global principles for rational points and zero cycles. Okay, so I thank the organizers for this invitation. Also to invite me to write on paper when my handwriting is un unreadable. Uh, but you may be allowed to complain at any time. I mean, it's desperate, but you can complain again and again, right? <laughs> so this first lecture is, will be devoted to the broad group of schemes, of varieties and schemes in a purely algebraic fashion. So we'll be over, over arbitrary fields, sometimes, well, sometimes even over just rings, but there will be practically no mention of number fields in, the, in this lecture. Let me uh, repeat uh, what we had seen in the previous lecture about what happens over field K with uh, separable closure KS and Galois group G. So we have Galois cohomology, which is some, something. You look at Galois modules, which are uh, there's an action of this profile group on, the, on modules, and the stabilizers are open. And you can define HIG with values in various modules. And so a module of particular interest is KS star, the multiplicative group of the separable closure of K. And uh, we have, uh, say, we have, okay, here's one result from Galois cohomology. is H1G with this in KS star is zero. This is Hilbert theorem 90. And then the other result, which was mentioned in the talk, is that uh, if you look at H2GS, k star. This is uh, there's an isomorphism with the Brab of k, which you can see in various ways. Uh, each time you have an isomorphism, you wonder it, which way the map goes. Well, you can do it both ways. So, so, but on the right hand side, you have something which has to do with central simple algebras, which is the, as, as Bianca reminded you. And then left hand side, you have Galois cohomology. And let me say a few things about things which happened over a field. Um, one thing is that, so Jean Cavier mentioned that the bar of a finite field is zero. There's another interesting, there are two other interesting cases where the bar group is of, an, of a non algebraic closed field is zero. Is you take bar group of um, K of C, where K is algebraically closed, and C is a curve. That is zero. This is ten theorem. Uh, which actually is proved by uh, looking at the right hand side and looking at central simple algebra over that field. And uh, the other one, which I think is due to Lang, is if you take uh, a discrete version ring with real field kappa, and kappa is algebraically closed, and, K is, and A is complete, then the bar group of K is zero. So much. So let me now switch to to um, schemes and varieties. So you have Galois cohomology for fields. Now, uh, if you look at, you want to look at commutative rings and you want to look at schemes, uh, you wonder what is the analog of this. So uh, uh, as far if you were thinking in terms of the, the bar group, you could say, okay, we have vector, we have fields. We have uh, vectors, finite dimensional vector spaces, committed rings, we have projective modules, schemes, we have uh, vector bundles. And then you, you can say, well, okay, we'll have central simple algebras, and then we'll have uh, Azuma algebras over a ring, which is a family of central simple algebra of ring, then you can do that over a scheme. So that's one version of what the bra group would be. So if X is a scheme, you can define an Azuma bra group which, uh, in practice, is not very useful. So uh, the thing which is useful is the, is the um, I, I can point here. The thing which is useful is the analog of this side. And this is the, the uh, this is Grothendieck bar group, which I'd simply write bar group of X. So Grothendieck has defined something called etal cohomology. Well, etal topology, first of all, and then etal cohomology. And uh, the, the Grothendieck bra group is the second cohomology group, H2 etal, of X with values in the multiplicative group. GM is a sheaf. You have a sheaf on, on any scheme. 
given by the multiplicity group of a vertebral function on the open set you look at, or in the open cover you look at. And you define bar of x as h2 et al of x values in gm. So to put this in perspective with which I wrote on the previous slide, uh, you can ask what is h1 et al of x with values in gm? And this is Grothendieck's Hilbert theorem 90, which is that h1 et al is the same as h1 Zariski. So if you, for the Zariski topology, you'd get the same group. And that group is known under various names. Uh, the most classical one is PICA. And say, uh, under reasonable circumstances, this is just divisors of x divided by div divisors of Russian functions. Okay. So uh, if x is a field, of course, uh, uh, spec k is a point, and then uh, this is zero. So you recover Hilbert theorem 90 uh, in this setup. So one thing which uh, one does over a field is one looks at the Kuma sequence. One goes to mu n. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, just like, oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's Okay, okay. Okay, okay. It's all right. Thank you. Okay. I'm not respecting the rules. So. Okay, so uh, over a field, uh, you, people, I mean, play a lot with this sequence called the Kuma sequence. X goes to X to the N, where N is prime to the characteristic of K. And you write down the sequence. And if you write the sequence, what you find is that you find that H2 of K, and you use Hilbert 90 you find that H2 of K with what is mu n, which is shorthand for H2 of Galois Ks over K, with values in the nth root of unity in Ks, is isomorphic to the n torsion of the bar of K. Now you can do the analog for the, for the bar group of a scheme. So you also have an exact sequence mu n goes to gm, goes to x, goes to gm x, x goes to x to the n, provided n is invertible in your scheme. And uh, well, out of this, you get uh, an exact sequence, pick x modulo n goes to uh, h2 x et al x mu n goes to bar of x killed by n goes to zero. Okay, so in this case, you, there's a Picard component, uh, whereas for our field, this would be zero. All right. So now in the next. Uh, minutes, or a few minutes, I want to discuss uh, residues, as we had seen in, 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 so to some extent in the previous lecture, and, and the connection with purity. So the bra group, uh, in fact, has been used in many ways, but there are two directions in which it's been used. There's a number theory direction, where you look at, define bra many abstraction, as we'll see in, in the lectures over the next few days. And there's also, you can use it as a biracial invariant to tell that the variety, say, over the complex, smooth and projective, which is close to being a rational variety, in fact, is not biracial to projective space. And to do that, you use the biracial invariant properties of the bar group. And uh, so I will say more about this now. All right, so um, now let's suppose that our scheme X is regular and integral. And I call uh, what a k of x will be the function field of x. Right. So now what happens is Grothendieck has written down a sequence g m x, an exact sequence for the etal topology, i eta low star g m eta, goes to direct sum for all the points in quad dimension one of the i x low star. Z, Z. So X is your scheme, which is, uh, I, I should say, a material, well, okay, regular integral. It's uh, five dimensional. Eta is the joint point. And so you have GM eta over the, the joint point. You push it over the, the function over, over X. This is this I eta low star. I, I mean, you don't have to be too frightened by what I'm writing. I, 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 I come down to us at some point. And then here, you look at all the, 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 the points of condemnation one. That is the sub-varieties of maximal dimension not equal to the entire x. And there are maps like this, which go, in fact, this, this sequence is simply the usual sequence at the level of rings uh, for etal covers, is simply uh, looking at uh, your ring in the fraction field, and then the direct sum for all the possible valuations of the If you're a normal ring, 
if you have a function, uh, an element in the, in the fraction field which, has, uh, which is invertible at, I'm mean, sorry, which, uh, whose divisor is trivial, then it is a unit, okay, locally, you have this property. And this is just globalizing this, this, this property for the, uh, for the etal topology. So what Grotendieck explains in his in this three lectures on the bar group, and at one point, he said, okay, we'll take the exact sequence of cohomology associated to this. So what you get out of this is the following. You get, you prove that, so okay, let me write it, H1, X, direct sum, X in X1, of I X low star Z, goes to H2, XGM, which is the bra group we're interested in, goes to H2X, this is all etal topology. Okay. I eta low star GM eta, goes to direct sum X in X1 of the H2 of X with Z and I X star Z. And now what happens is that this one, in fact, is uh, the same as uh, the direct sum of the H1 of the residue field at X with values in Z. And then H1 of a, color of a profile group with values in Z is just hum of this profile group in, with values in Z, which is zero. So here we get a zero. And then you have the problem of comparing this group, H2 et al, X I et al, G, I et al, GM, with the bra group of the function field. So there's H2 of eta with values in GM, which is the bra group of this function field. And so what you show by using Hilbert 90 is that there's an injection here. And then this part here is, is also quite nice. It's direct sum of H1 of K of X, uh, H2 of K of X Z, which is the same thing as H1 of K of X Q mod Z. So you see here, you have the bra group of the function field. And here at each point of codimension one, you have H1, of the character group of the, the really field. So basically what you would want is something here. But it doesn't come out of it because here, in, even for a very nice regular thing, there is something com coming. So there's a difficulty here. You get some, what you get from this is that you get a theorem, which is that the bra of x injects into the bra of the function field, okay, which is already a very nice theorem, which you 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 could have, uh, which was implicitly in the, in the last lecture in the in the case of this curve. There was an element in the bra of k of the curve, which was viewed as an element of the bra of the whole curve. But then we have this problem with, with uh, would be, you, you want residues here, which is the analog of poles for functions, for rational functions, but in a higher cohomological degree. So this is where the, this whole business of purity comes in if you want to, 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 get, to, to get a nice sequence. So, uh, let's, so let me talk about purity for etal cohomology. Yes? Yes? GMX. This is GM over X. So, on any uh, open set, is simply invertible functions on this open set included in the invertible fun uh, in the function of the function field. GMX, sorry, DX. DX yeah. There's no K here. This is, I'm over an arbitrary scheme, okay? There's no ground field. This K of X here is simply a notation for function field. Um, all right, so well, the situation we, we look at, with the people who are interested in purity, look at is the following. You have a regular scheme. And then you have um, a closed subscheme. Of uh, fixed co-dimension. C. In fact, in our case, we work a fixed co-dimension C. And then U is the complement. But the Y itself, you want the Y to be regular. And this is what people call a, well, I mean, this is a regular uh, immersion that is locally is defined by an uh, the right number of, uh, of functions. And then, now if you have a situation like this and you take, suppose n is invertible in x, you, you can write long exact sequences of etal cohomology. So I won't write the, the, the index etal, but it's all etal cohomology. And so I look, look at the part which is of interest to me, h2x mu n, 
goes to H2 U mu N, goes to H3 with support in Y of X with values in mu N. Now, the whole issue of purity is to compare this et al. cohomology with support with the cohomology of the support. So what you want, you want that hi with values in y of x, that's what you want, huh? with values in mu n, uh, is isomorphic to hi minus 2c, c is the co-dimension, of y with values in now here I have to be, a, it's, it's a bit complicated, you have to, to twist, it's tensor, one minus C. So it's mu n, tensor mu n, tensor mu n, but uh, one minus C means uh, the, the home. Okay, it's, uh, forget about this thing, it's something, suppose mu n was in the, suppose you, the truth of unity were in the bottom scheme, uh, that I wouldn't have to, to worry about this, this, uh, this twist. Okay. So you want this. And so this is something which, uh, at the time when Grothendieck wrote the, he talks on the bar group. This had been proved for smooth variety over a field in SGA4. So, in, uh, so in, back in 1968, favorable year, uh, this was proved in SGA4 uh, for X over K variety, smooth variety of a field. Of a field. And it's only much time later that, in fact, that the general purity theorem under minimal assumption was proved by Gaber. So, uh, and then uh, it's, as usual, and it spreads over some, some uh, time. I think the, the reference now is a book which has probably not yet appeared, but which is going to appear in Asterisk. So there's a book which will appear so soon in Asterisk. which is uh, published by Iluzi uh, or Gogozo. I think maybe the, these three are the editors. Maybe I forgot I'm forgetting someone. So the statement is that this is true in general. This is true for um, excellent schemes. Okay, excellent is a property which is true for basically all the schemes you really want to look at. So the, the, now the, the, the outcome of purity is that you can say something about the, bra, the purity for the bra group. Yes? I'm sorry? Yeah, it is a regular embedding, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just uh, stating, yeah, this is a regular embedding here. I'm sorry? Well, Purity is, purity is really this statement. Purity is this statement. Well, I mean, in various contexts, well, purity sometimes is, is used for what we're going to see as a consequence of that statement, but that's the basic statement. Okay, so uh, now let, let's, let's look at the, the bra group. So if we, if we take now y, in X and U. I'm sorry? Yeah? Well, I mean, you can, then you start, I mean, for the game which I show you, you could take the maximal co-dimension, the, sorry, the, the minimal co-dimension and then go down further. You could, I mean, you could take off the ones which are smaller. You're going to see what I'm going to do now. Yeah, for the argument, you, you take off the ones which are which are of a smaller dimension, just concentrate on what's left, and then afterwards you you well you you see what happens now. Okay. So, uh, so 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 here here suppose we're we're pure, and this y is a, a direct sum of y i, irreducible. Then uh, out of purity statement, will follow the so, so in this of condition one. Let's look at the condition one case. So out of this purity statement and the Kumar sequence, which I mentioned before, so the Kumar sequence, uh, something which is clear is that if I look at the restriction map from peak X to PQ, this is onto. So this is why in the Kumar sequence, uh, I don't have to worry about this part. I'm really concentrating about the H2 with values in mu n. So uh, what I get out of this is uh, I get a sequence, uh, H2 X mu n, 
goes to H2 U mu n, goes to Dirac sum for the for i equals one to whatever r of the H1 of y i with coefficients in Zen model. And now this is an integral that I take irreducible component. This is integral regular. So this, is, in fact, is a subgroup of H1 of the function field of y with coefficients in Zen model. Okay. So what we see is that a class in, 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 this, in this setup where y is regular, and this is pure, this is a regular emission in x, a class in H2 u mu n, which has all its residue trivial at the point of co-adaption 1, actually comes for the whole of H2 x mu n. Below the, so I'm, I'm just look at this part of the sequence. H two x mu n. H, oh, this here. What is this? Mu n coefficients mu n coefficients mu n. But then here it's Zen mod n. Below that it's the same. It's H one of the function field of y with values in Zen mod n. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, sorry. H one of the function field of y i with coefficients. Yeah, I written this, but too small, with values in Zen mod n. Okay. So a class in H2 U mu n, which is trivial in this residue, actually comes from there. So we get, because of this subjectivity here and the Kuma sequence, uh, we'll get that uh, bra group of x killed by n, we get an exact sequence, bra group of u killed by n, goes to direct sum for all the points of co-adaption in, in a yi, sorry, I, I, I equals one n, of d h one of k of yi z over n. So the outcome is that if I taking just uh, rather than taking um, um, now I can look at uh, okay uh, now this what do I get I get that uh, shall I put it um, uh, okay so. I, so Okay, so, so now the, the next step is this, is that you take your x and then you have a y which is in u, but which is possibly singular. So the, now the y is still of codemission c, of codemission uh, one, but it's possibly singular. Uh, you take off the singular locus. You take x minus y singular, contain u. And then you're in a good shape because now your, your y is, is regular, and it's regular, it's got the right co-dimension, it's regular scheme. So at this level, you can write an exact sequence, bar group of x minus y singular, goes to direct sum of all these points of co-dimension one, h1 k of yi z mod n, I went from one to m to n, yeah. and then you get, um, uh, what am I talking about? Um, sorry, this is, I'm sorry, this is, I, I, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean you here, okay, I mean you here. Okay, thank you. This is what you want to say? I get you here, and then here I get bra group of uh, x minus a y singular. Okay. So if I have a class in the bra group of u, which has its residue trivial at this point of connection one, at least I know that it comes from bra group of x minus something of lower co-dimension. And now this, you just go on with this game. You go on with this game, and you use the fact that uh, because you have purity, and because you have purity, uh, uh, if, uh, as soon as you're in, in co-dimension bigger than two, uh, you, you get an h uh, one minus something, you get coefficient negative, you get zero there. Okay. So the outcome of this is that So the theorem is, if I take x regular uh, integral uh, and excellence, then we have purity. Purity for the bra group, which is that there is an exact sequence. Zero goes to bra group of x. So I put a dash here. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Bra group of the function field of x, dash goes to direct sum for all the points in co-dimension one of x of the h1 of the residue field 
with coefficients in Q mod Z, and I put a dash. Dash means I, dash means torsion. All these groups are torsion, and dash means torsion prime to torsion prime to character to to whatever is is a trouble. So uh, <laughs> so let's see. Um, I, I should I, I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm, should, I'm stupid. I should write L is no X star, and I should take the L prime apart here for each of them. So you do that for each L, which is which is good. I mean, quite often you're refilled. The field has a characteristic, and then you 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 take the torsion prime to the characteristic. Okay. So, right. So now about these residue maps, the problem is that in the if you look at the, the Grot a Grot and Dick, they're defined in a very abstract fashion. In fact, uh, honestly, I think you, it's very hard to compute them from this, uh, unless you start imagining yourself into the details of e SGA4 or this recent book. Uh, published by Eduzi and collaborators. So in fact, in concrete cases, uh, this, this, uh, this map is quite easy to see. And in fact, we've vaguely, we essentially saw it in a special case. But let, so let's say A is a DVR, um, um, field of fraction K and maybe excellent to be on the safe side. And the real field is kappa. Uh, in this case, we should see a map from bar of k, and, and say l is invertible, as in kappa star, a bar of k prime to l, to h1 prime to l, of kappa with coefficient q mod z. And one, one can write this map quite explicitly, because what you do in this, you can see, see that in, uh, in cells core loco, uh, that you complete a, you replace a by a hat, and then you look at the fraction field, k hat, and you look at the maximal unmodified extension. So you have k hat and k hat bar. So let's say characteristic zero, this one characteristic zero. k hat bar. So here you have inertia, and here in parallel you have kappa and kappa uh, separable. And so what, what happens is that the bar group of k, in fact, coincides with what was denoted bar group of, well, let's say k hat, um, k hat, k hat nr in the previous talk, because the bar group of k hat nr is zero by what I said, say kappa is perfect. What was, uh, as I said, this result of line that the bar of kappa nr is trivial. So that implies that the, 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 the part of bar of kappa, which is killed over there, over the algebraic closure, actually is already killed here. And then this is just H2 by using Hilbert 90 at some point. This is H2 of G with values in K bar, uh, K hat NR star. And now this K hat NR star fits into a short exact sequence. Unit of NR star goes to K NR star, NR star, goes to Z by the valuation, simply, the, the, the discrete variation. You have the discrete variation on K, on K hat, you, you still have it on K and R. In fact, this, this sequence actually split. But, and this UNR star uh, is got um, its main component, so to say, is just kappa S star, the residue here. So if you look at H2 with values in, in this group here, you have a map to H2 of G with, with values in Z here, which, in fact, is an isomorphism, because the, the, the Galois homology this one, starting from H1, is zero. It's just like the cohomology of, of kappa, kappa A star. And that, so in fact, you get an isomorphism here. And then using the standard sequence Z goes to Q, goes to Q mod Z, you get that this thing is H1 of G with values in Q mod Z. And you see the concrete way of computing the residue from, the, from, the, from this setup. Of course, if you have your cohomology class, it's not completely obvious to, to actually write, to check that you can write it as a, as a class or at this level. But it is a fact, you can do it. So that's the resume map in a concrete fashion. Yeah? I'm sorry? This one, so this one, okay, let me write this down. So you have the units, U and R, sorry. Okay, U and R star. You can reduce to kappa S star. And then you have the units which are congruent to one mod, mod uh, modulo the, the, the generator of the maximal ideal in UNR. And there's the resume map we, 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 um, to, um, 
where well, this one maps to kappa s star. I'm talking nonsense. This one are the ones which are congruent to one. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. So the point is that the cohomology of this one is trivial. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I wrote nonsense. No, this was correct. This was correct. Uh, okay. This was this map here. This simply the, at the level of the units, you can reduce modulo the maximal ideal. Okay, and the, the multiple group will re, will go to the multiple group of the of K star. And the point is that the kernel has trivial cohomology, okay, which I didn't say. I'm sorry. Okay. So where are we? <laughs> yeah, but uh, but okay, so where are we? We are so I have H one of G with values in U. I'm sorry, H one of G with values in U and R star goes to. Uh, H2, I'm sorry, H2 of G with values in U and R star goes to H2 of G with values in K and R star goes to H2. In fact, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm discussing this part because all I wanted to, so, to see is the, is the, is the ratio map. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, in fact, you have a point. The point is that if you look at what happens on, on, on the left, what you will get in this case where you the complete case, you will find that the, the left is the bra group of the residue field. Okay, okay, which in fact is the problem of the ring. So you get back to this sequence, bra of A goes to bra of K goes to H1 cube of A. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I just wanted to show the, the residue map which is here. Yeah. This is the main point. Residue map. So let me get rid of this. <laughs> okay, so now, uh, so uh, consequence of purity, is biational invariance. So I'm, I'm over field K, and again, okay, let me say characteristic of K is zero, just for, for, to simplify the discussion. And I have X and Y, which are over K, which are smooth, projective, uh, integral, K varieties. I assume that they're biational. That is, there's an open set, non-empty, uh, in V, uh, in, in X, and another one in Y, and which are isomorphic. And then, so the theorem is that, then, prop of X is isomorphic to prop of Y. And combined with the fact that prop of projective space, as we'll see in a minute, is trivial, that's a way of detecting non-rationality of varieties. Okay, and so how do you prove this? Well, the proof is purity. So you have your, 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 your x and uh, y, okay? And now uh, there exists uh, another open set w here. We have a rational map from x to y. There's an open set y x, uh, in x which contains all the points of codimension one, which extend this map and with a morphism from, from w to y. Because uh, y is proper, and so a rational map like this is defined as it's really defined at any point of codimension one. So from this, we get a map from bar group of Y to bar group of W. This was in bar group of K of Y. Uh, this is in bar group of K of X. But then, because, because the difference between X and W is of codimension at least two, in fact, the map from bar of X to bar of, of uh, W is an isomorphism. So the map at the level of function field sends bar of y into bar of x. And then you go back and forth. Okay, that's the, the so, um, all right. so that's the concrete application of purity. It's, it's, yeah? Can you speak louder? Oh, it's coming into play here because oh, so smoothness is in, uh, smoothness is, is, is used here, and uh, and proper pro projectivity is used here because we have a rational map, so it's not defined everywhere. But 
at, because the x is smooth and therefore normal, at points of codimension one, all you have is a discrete variation ring. And then because y is proper, a map on the uh, spectrum, say suppose y was projective to make things simple. Uh, and you have a map from this spectrum of the fraction field of your discrete variation ring into this y. Well, it's, you just write the coordinates in projective space and you get rid of the denominators in order to get things where, which are not all divisible by the universal parameter. Then you have a morphism from your uh, discrete variation, spectrum of discrete variation ring into y. That's where it comes in. Its map is defined in conemption one. Okay. So I repeat, smoothness of x plus prop, uh, properness of y is used to say that this map is defined at points of conemption one. Well, no, this is over a field. So for this one, you can you, you can refer to SGA four. Okay. So uh, so now let's go to. So how to compute this bar group? So we, we have discussed this bar group. I discussed purity at length, maybe too much, but. Uh, so how to compute this bar group? Well, I mean, you, you, can, you can do some very down to us computations. So uh, first of all, let's start with uh, the, the projective line. So I take K and I assume K is perfect. I don't want to be bothered by this. And I, now I have a sequence. One goes to k bar star, goes to k bar of t star, goes to direct sum for all the points of conemission one on the line. That is, I mean, to be fancy, it's just all, 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 all points of the line for k bar, uh, even conemission one, of, uh, of z. And then there's a, uh, there's a z here which comes from the fact that the number of, if you have a rational function, the number of, the, uh, the degree of the zeros is, the degree, the sum of the degree of the zero is equal to the sum of the degree of the poles. And this is an exact sequence because if I have a rational function in one variable uh, over, t, over P1, which has no zero, no, no, the, the, no, no poles, it's a constant, okay? So if, if you use this sequence and you use 10, from this you get the exact sequence, barb of k goes to barb of k of t, goes to direct sum for all the points of codimension one over the, I mean, close point of codimension one on X, of the H1 of the residue field at X of some Q mod Z, and then here you get H1 of ground field K Q mod Z, and the zero here, and here you have some core restriction maps. So that's a description, this is a so-called FADAF exact sequence for the function field of P1. You can, as you may imagine, you can prove this in any number of ways. In particular, start with the sequence I wrote at the beginning, GMX goes to I eta, GM, GM eta star goes direct sum Z because this is a very simple uh, setup here. Okay, so from this, uh, we, we have following facts. The blob of K is equal to the blob of phi one K. Let, uh, let me be vague about the, the p-torsion and characteristic p in this talk, so I just I don't have time to go, to go into this. So let's say away from the characteristics, certainly all these things are true. And then, the, in fact, this, this one, uh, as a matter of fact, is true for all fields, true, true for NAK. Now one which is not true for NAK is this one, probably of k is probably of A1k. So this is k, uh, well, this is, I, I have to put a dash here for, for you have to be careful when p is equal to the characteristic of k. Okay, and then from this, you can, let's, let me stick to characteristic k equals zero. You can deduce that the bra group of k is isomorphic to the bra group of a and k in an. And this is a quite a amusing type of argument. But you can do it in many ways, but here is one way to do it. You do it by, by induction. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay? No, 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 no. Okay. You can do it by induction. Um, so you say for A2. So I take A2 and I project out to A1 in the obvious fashion. And here I have the joint fiber A1 over KFT. KFT is the joint point. Okay. So I take my element and bar of A2. I push it to the, bra to the joint fiber, bar one, A1, KFT. Now, over an arbitrary field of 
probably this ma the, the, the map from bar of k of t to bar of a1 k of t is an isomorphism. Okay. And then what you do is you say you look at residues. So you look at the point of collapsion one here, x on p1, p1k, the close point, and the fiber, which is p1 over k of x. And at this level, you have residues. So let me call them delta or this residue. I have a residue that goes into H1 of the function field of this P1, K of X, P1. And I have a residue here, which goes to, into H1 of K of X, this is, uh, uh, K, sorry, K of X, but I don't know, Q mod Z, sorry. K of X of P1 with coefficients in Q mod Z. And here I have a residue at this close point X on the, the affine line that goes to H1 K of X Q mod Z. And then, because the word is well done, that is because the fiber is, is smooth and multiplicity one, there's a, you can complete this diagram by just the obvious uh, re restriction from K of X to the function field of P1 over K of X. And this diagram is commutative. And this map is injective. Because you can specialize to a point on, on the P1. And so, we started from Mendel Brave A2, we it here, because it comes from here, we know that the residue here is trivial. But we knew that it came from Brave of TFT, so the residue here is something which goes to zero here and therefore is trivial. And therefore, so we start with beta, we get the beta one, which comes from a beta two, and all the residues are zero, and therefore, by the previous sequence, we know that this beta two comes from a beta three, which is a constant, and then you've proven that your element of Brave of A2K came from Brave of K. Or an, yeah. I'm just because I want to make it simple, but you just you just iterate the argument. Okay. Well, the theorem. No, I. I well, I, I wrote down the exact sequence before. This one here. You mean you wanted to, to, to you want to have it for a fine space? Yeah, for our fine space. Well, no, I mean, for our fine space, you would get the sequence like this, but it's, uh, you won't have this, this business with the sum of the, this reciprocity point here. This is specific to curves. Okay, so next step. Okay, so I have 10 minutes, is that right? Five, five minutes, five minutes. Okay, so I have to make choices. <laughs> So let me, okay, so I, okay, my choice will be to discuss what happens in a module vibration, which is something of, of interest. Is, so, well, first of all, conics. So if I take C over K, smooth conic, uh, I want to do that. Well, you have to take my, my word for this. Uh, there's a short exact sequence, which is Z mod two times, the, so to a smooth conic, given by X square minus AY square minus BZ square equals zero. There's the cotton algebra, which is associated to it, from the previous lecture, AB. And then there's a short exact sequence like this, prob of K, prob of C. So the prob of P1 was prob of K, but if you take a conic which need not have a rational, if a conic has a rational point, it's P1, so it's okay, the AB is trivial. But if the conic doesn't have a rational point, then this AB is non-trivial in the bar of K, and what you get is an exact equivalent like this, which was proven by Witt, 1934. Okay. And so you can, uh, what I want to discuss is vibrations into conic to get an analog of fad AF exact sequence for, for vibration into conics. So I'm interested in, and will be interested in, in these lectures in a situation like this. We have X over P1K, and the generic fiber over K of T is a conic. And you would like to know what the bra of, of X, X is smooth and projective. And your vibration 
as degenerations. So you have degenerations which you can always assume are given by uh, a degenerate technique of this type. So you have k of x, and here you have a, a, a quadratic extension, a k dash of x, corresponding to switching the two, the two components of your degenerate conic. So uh, uh, let me at least state uh, the result. So the result is that, uh, so assume we're away from, well, I mean, assume the characteristic, uh, ignore the, the characteristic problems. Uh, then uh, assume that the, the conic bundle you're given is not trivial. That is that the x eta has no rational point over kft. This is an inter interesting case. Then there's an exact sequence. Zero goes to Bob of k, goes to, where, what is it? Uh, yeah, okay. Bob of x, the total space, goes to direct sum for all the bad points, x bad, of the uh, z mod of z mod twos, divided by uh, the class, uh, the the, the family delta x of the residues, the family of residues of the generic, uh, the generic uh, conic. So I have the, the, the generic conic, x eta, over k of t. To it is associated a class alpha of the same type as above in bra with k of t. And you can take the various residues at this point. You take the family of residues, okay, and you embed it diagonally into, the, into this. And then the, the map here goes to uh, k star mod k star square. I'm not mistaken. No, I'm sorry. It goes to Z mod 2. What I'm talking about. I'm sorry. I first friction now. So there's a way to compute uh, the bra group of the total space. So this is not a trivial vibration like A2 goes to A1 as we had before. This is a conic bundle of, a, of, a, of a P1. Uh, and so we have this basic exact sequence. And uh, basically, when proved this exact sequence by playing a game like the one we had just before. Two minutes, and I can try to sketch this. So we have this. Now we have this quadratic extension, and so you you start. You look at bar of x, the generic fiber. Go to the generic fiber, bar of x eta, and the map from bar of k of t to bar of x of eta, because it's the generic fiber is a conic. By the by, V theorem, you know there's exact sequence like this with z mod two alpha here. And then you look at the residues on the, on the line, x and t1, of the h1 of k of x, q mod z. And similarly above. Now, what happens is that at the smooth fibers, you just get conics over k of x, and the map from h1 of the function field of, uh, h1 of k of x into the function field of something with geometric integral is injective. So, so you get a direct sum, say, for the good x of h1 k of x of p1, oh, I'm sorry, of a conic, q mod z, and then you have the bad ones. So for the good ones, as I, so you start with a class here, let's call it beta, you push it here, beta one, by V theorem it, goes to, it comes from b2, beta two, and then you start investigating the residues. You find that the residues at the points where the fiber is, is a smooth conic have to be zero because you get an injection. But at the bad ones, you have this quite extension that comes up. So what you get, you get classes. You get that the residues at bad, bad, at bad, bad x, the residue lands in H1 of k dash of x over k of x coefficient z mod 2. And this is how you get your z mod 2 in the previous sequence. This is how you get the z mod 2 here. Okay, I'll stop here. <laughs>